Hello, <laughs> we're live. Actually, I'm trying to get rid of some of the, uh, I'm trying to sign out of some of the online stuff. So hopefully make the, the signal seems to be kind of wonky right now. But we are live at 7.13. I'm a little bit late, but I'm here. Tonight we're going to talk about where to look for power because there's a lot of places where people are looking. And I also want to talk about the excuse that I often get when I, when I talk about these things because it's really funny. It's like the next level. People think that it's the next level of, oh, hey, this will, this will explain everything. <laughs> no, it really doesn't explain everything. So what am I talking about? Well, so recently I did a bunch of testing on spark plugs. We did some on oil. You know, we've done, I've done valve springs. We've, we've done some really weird stuff, some really esoteric stuff, stuff where we're looking for sometimes zero horsepower, like the piston flip thing where we found zero horsepower. And the same thing with spark plugs, there's basically no plug, there's no change in power from the different spark, spark plugs, especially when they're all new and they're all gapped and they're all working the way that they're supposed to. The spark plug design doesn't really lend itself to producing power because it, it, and as you, if you look at the thumbnail, you'll see what I'm talking about. If we look at this, people seem to think that the, like on the spark plug, that the spark radiates out in a particular direction. It doesn't. Um, the flame front doesn't go in one direction. It actually goes out everywhere. It expands out from the center point or from the point of origin and expands out everywhere in all directions. The, the, the thing that it might not do, and I guess an argument could be made, is if the spark plug electrode stopped flame propagation from going in that direction. And then there would be this little margin where there's no flame propagation. But the problem is that once it got past that, it's still going to cover everything behind that. So, and all of this happens very, very fast. That's another thing that people don't realize. They, they think that this thing, they think that when a spark goes, they envision it as this perfect thing <laughs> and that it goes, they don't, they're not even envisioning what's actually happening. Um, even in slow motion, they're not envisioning what's actually happening. They're, it's really hard for lots of people to comprehend. The critical thing, and this is what we talk about a lot, the critical thing is that it's happening. And if it doesn't happen, if there's a misfire so that that spark doesn't turn into flame front, uh, a flame front and, and flame propagation and we don't get expansion and we don't get the that cylinder doesn't fire on that particular instance, on that particular revolution. It's not a big deal. You can make up for it on the next one because they're happening so fast. You, you Sometimes you don't even, it doesn't even really miss a beat. You can't even feel it. Sometimes you can, depending on the RPM range of the motor. But if you have that, if you have misfire and you cure that, there's, there's room for power. Where people want to discuss, and, and there's, there's, I'm going to say almost no power there. I'm going to like to say no power. It's almost immeasurable, but the way that this thing goes out and how one spark plug initiates it differently than another and how much spark energy it does, the, the, same, the same sort of discussion happens with spark plug wires. We've talked about this many times, and I've used the spark plug wires that I've used on a lot of these big bang motors are wrecking yard spark plug wires that have the mileage that the motor has on it, for all I know. That they, I know, for all I know, they're the original ones. They certainly look like the original ones. So there's something that have a hundred or two hundred or more thousand miles on them. I don't know how many fires that is, but it's a lot. It's been in a terrible, heated, underhood environment. The, you know, the material starts to give way. It starts to get brittle and crack and all sorts of bad things. But what they want to talk about, because what the plug wire manufacturers want to talk about is, oh, it's this many ohms. Per, per foot. It's got this kind of resistance or doesn't have that kind of resistance is what they're trying to sell you. They're trying to tell you that, oh, our, our spark energy travels unrestricted through the length of this wire. We get more spark energy because we have less resistance. There's less drag <laughs> for the, elect for the elect electricity to pass through here, for the current to pass through. What they're not telling you is that it's not that much of a restriction. <laughs> it's like a bullet passing through air. Well, on hotter or colder days, the, the bullet's going to have more or less resistance. But if the bullet strikes something, it's still going to do damage to it. And that's what we're talking about here. The uh, In the terms of, on the spark plug wire, the difference between, 
you know, a good wire and a bad wire, the bad wire still has more than enough spark energy to do what it needs to do. It's, it's, it's the fact that you've, all it needs is 10% of what it has to get the job done. And so it has 90% extra in capacity and you've degraded it by 1% because of this, uh, because of the winding or whatever kind of wire that you've picked, but you're still well within the safety range. It's still going to do the job, but people want to talk about things. Same, same thing with spark plug. Well, but you know, it's got this kind of gap and it initiates this and goes out in this direction and, and it's more even travel and all that stuff. No, it's not. It's not any of those things. It works or it doesn't work. Same thing, same thing, plug wire. Same thing, things, same things with coils. Well, coils have more spark energy. Yes, they do. There are some that are better than others. There are some that have a better rise time. There are some that have more output energy. Some have more windings. There's lots of things that go, go on with a coil. But, and this is the thing, where you would start looking for additional spark energy from coils are on extreme applications. If you put coils on a stock junkyard 5.3, unless one of your coils was bad and it was misfiring, you're not going to see any power. It doesn't matter what any sort of video told you or what advertisement or any of that. That's not going to happen. I know because I've run lots and lots of coils on LS motors. And whenever we, and the, and the reason that I've done this is we've actually done this by accident. The, the reason that I've done it is because we're looking to cure, like we have some sort of problem. We have some sort of misfire problem. We have some sort of thing where the, the motor is not working correctly. So we go through a sequence of things that we test. Well, those are old ratty junkyard wires and it's a ratty set of truck coils and, and it has questionable parentage and compatibility on the spark plugs. So we try all these things. Well, let's just put new stuff in there or let's put stuff that we know that worked in there. So we switch out the coils. That didn't do anything. We switch out the wires. That didn't do anything. So switch out the spark plugs. That didn't do anything. Or maybe it did. Maybe one of the plugs was cracked. Maybe it was fouled from when we first started it up because it was less than eight to one air fuel because it was so it had so much fuel in it. Maybe the previous tune was from E85 and it was from a different size injector. When we first started up, it's like pig rich. And it's like, it's unhappy and we fouled the plug. Okay, we changed the plug. Now everything's happy. But while we were doing that, all of those coils worked fine. And the reason that they work fine is because they have excess capacity to get the job done. And the fact that one might be five or 10% better than another one, we're never in that range where that five or 10% makes any difference at all. Even if that was a real number, because quite honestly, five or 10% could be quite a bit. And we won't see that. We won't see that in spark plugs. We won't see that in wires. We won't see that probably in coils until we get to the very, very highest range of these things where we're looking at 1,500, 2,000 horsepower, whatever the, the amount of boost and cylinder pressure that's required to make those kinds of power outputs, then you might start getting specific about things. But in the level that 99% of us are dealing with, the 1,000 the horsepower range, you have what you need. You don't look there. It's the, the, the comments that I got on the spark plug thing and the, and the, um, the indexing. The indexing made a lot of people mad because they were indexers from way back. I've been doing this since the 60s. Um, the indexing, the, uh, the piston flip thing, all of those things. Well, and here's the argument that I get. Well, you know, Richard, when you're racing, you're looking for one horsepower here. And if you could find one horsepower in eight different places, then all of a sudden that's eight horsepower and that makes a difference. And I understand the logic of that, of that type of mentality and that type of discussion, because were that the case, I, I know having been through engine masters competition, where I was looking for one horsepower, one average horsepower in my case, looking for that in lots and lots of places, 450 poles later, we were looking for stuff like that. But the thing that I'm talking about doesn't have one horsepower. It has none horsepower. And eight times zero is still zero. So that that's a thing, that's, that's an excuse that guys use to tell you that they're right and that I'm wrong and that when they're looking for it, they're looking for that one horsepower, but we didn't find any. We found zero. No, you're, you know, you just don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you didn't do it correctly. We're going to find one horsepower and then we're going to find one and then we're going to find one. No, you're not going to find any of that. It's not there. Where you need to look is somewhere else. We've been through all of these things and there's not power there. So you should not be focused there. Um, I get this a lot with the, the other area that I get this with. And the, this is another area that I actually want to test because I haven't done enough testing on this. And that are, those are throttle body spacers. So I've done lots of testing on, if you put a bigger throttle body and you neck it down to the size of the, 
the orifice in the intake manifold, the intake manifold is going to ultimately determine what the flow rate is. You can make a radius entry and you can help the flow rate of the throttle body that you have. And you can certainly do that. And that works. That improves the airflow. The second question then becomes, do you, does the motor that you're working on need that extra airflow? Will it benefit from that? And because you've made the throttle body flow more, are you actually getting more airflow and more power production? That's a whole nother thing. We, we can put a bigger throttle body on there and the bigger throttle body flows more. But if it doesn't translate into more airflow into the motor, more power output, then obviously it didn't do any good. So that's another area. But if, if we have an opening in a manifold and we have a throttle body that, that is that size opening, and then we put a spacer that is also that size opening, the question then becomes, we have changed the plenum volume. Is the change in plenum volume actually going to change the power output? <laughs> that, that's a good test. Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know the answer to that. And I what I think is that the answer to that isn't an absolute thing. I haven't found plenum volume to be very dramatic in terms of power gains in all of my testing. I haven't seen that. I want to see that. I want that to be something, but I haven't seen it. And I've seen other people, I've seen other tests that people have done that are claiming that, <laughs> but I question their testing methodology <laughs> because they didn't really do a direct back-to-back -back test and they didn't do it to my satisfaction, knowing that they could reproduce the first thing that they were doing time and time again, and then show the gain that they were showing. So if you can't repeat your baseline test and have it repeat every time, and then you go to make a change and you see a gain, would we have seen a gain just from you making another run? That happens a lot. It happens more times than you'd realize. So when we're looking for stuff, the my recommendation for people is to always look at the big things first. The big three is what I normally recommend, and and specifically things on on specific engine families. On an LS, you should put a cam and springs in it because it, it that's going to be the biggest thing, short of nitrous or or a boost or whatever. Those things obviously are are in and unto themselves a separate section. But if you're going to do naturally aspirated gains without power adders. Then on an LS, I pick a camshaft. I may not pick that with a Ford. I'm not, I may pick an intake manifold or I might pick a, I might pick a camshaft, <laughs> might pick cylinder heads because all of those things are going to help a lot. The LS already has good intake. The LS already has good cylinder heads. The little five liter Ford does not. It already has a decent camshaft relative to the other things. So the other two things are holding them back. Same thing with small box Chevys, depending on which small box Chevy. If I was looking at a, you know, a, 1965 L79 327, a 350 high, 350 horse 327, I wouldn't change the intake manifold. That wouldn't be one of the things that I would consider. Um, I might not even change the camshaft. I might think cylinder head first because it already has a lot of camshaft in it. That camshaft works fairly well. There are lots better ones. But in my opinion, the head, the cylinder heads might be the first thing to change. You put a set of airflow research heads or trick flow or dark or Edelbrock or something else that's better than the fuel head that originally came on there or port the ones that are there. So depending on what engine family is there, I might recommend different things, but in looking at an LS, if I go to the wrecking yard and get a junkyard LS and run it on the dyno, like I have with this L33 many, many times now, or with the LM7s or LR4s or all the other stuff, the, the LY6, all these other motors that I've run, and there've been dozens. I never look at them and go, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to change the coils because I think that there's power in the coils or the wires. In fact, I'm adamant about never buying spark plug wires. I want to just use what I have. Um, luckily, the guys, uh, a few guys have sent me spark plug wires and I've used those. Like I've used the, which I really like, the um, ceramic boot ones for, I think, I think Excel sent those, uh, the ceramic boot ones. And those have worked well, but because they, they're ceramic. And when I'm using turbo stuff, it gets really hot in there and those help that. And that works very well. But so have the stock ones, as long as I keep all of the heat away from them. And when that's one of the things that I make sure that I get when I'm at a wrecking yard, if I'm getting a complete motor, I go around and I grab a good set of spark plug wires. Cause a lot of times when guys do what they're doing at the, at the wrecking yards, they'll just grab spark plug wires and they just yank them. They don't know that because those things have been on there for 200,000 miles that 
either the connection at the coil and certainly the connection at the spark plug, if it hasn't been taken off before, you're probably going to destroy the center wire before those things release. You got to grab them and twist them a little bit. And guys that have worked on these will know what I'm talking about. If you twist it a little bit and free up that like stiction, that, that connection between the spark plug and the boot or the coil and the boot, if you free that up first, then, then they just come right off. Then they'll, in fact, there is a yank test that spark plug wires have to have that they have to pass for OEM level stuff and even for aftermarket stuff that they have to pass that. They have to be able, you have to be able to yank on them and they have to hold a certain weight and they have to have that sort of force. They're tested for that. That doesn't mean that you could pick the motor up with it with a cherry picker with a spark plug wire because that's not a good idea. So I, I make sure that I get those. And so I've run motors with the original spark plugs, the obviously the original coil packs, the original spark plug wires, all of that stuff. And it works fantastic. And not once did I ever think, hey, Richard, you really should... You should put some fancy coils on there. People have sent me coils and I purposely not used them <laughs> because the ones that I have, since they've already made 1500 plus horsepower, I'm like, you know, if I at some day go to 2000, hey, let's, we'll think about coils. But until I do that, <laughs> pretty much a hard pass there. So we're going to start a poll. Let's see. So let me, let, let's get some, um, let's create poll. Let's get rid of that. So let me hear from you guys. What should our poll be? I'm going to scroll down to the bottom so that you, so that I can get the answers. What, what should our poll be for tonight? My plug wires identify as seatbelts. Seatbelts actually identify as engine, <laughs> engine hoist. Let's hear it, guys. <laughs> Port the heads are better plug wires. Uh, cords actually um, on a on the two point two liter Dodge, uh, I would do a camshaft first. So I'm not getting a lot of, I'm not getting a lot of polls. Come on, people. Not a, not a carb spacer, I don't think. Ported heads. No, I'm, I'm having a hard time coming up with one tonight. I can't ask if the heads or cam are more important. I, I can I can phrase it in a way that's got to be yes or no question. <laughs> should, should I get back to magnum testing? Here we got a good one. Should I test turbo mufflers on a turbo application? Should I test and see whether or not they add power or not? Or take away power, I guess, would be the thing. Should I test turbo mufflers on a turbo application? And now I can scroll back and see what all the excitement is about. Uh, 
Everyone's in the house. One liter mafia is in the house. That should be the question, Rags, is I should, should I run the sprint motor? And I'm definitely going to. Do long tube headers actually help low speed torque on a 4.8 liter? Yes, they do. It's cam intake exhaust are the places to look. Yep. Full electric accessories to limit parasitic loss. Uh, yes. David Visard radiuses the end of the cylinders. So down in the down in the crankcase, he radiuses those. Yep, Uncle Squirrel, I, I wish that was different. And that's not on me. That's on him. Not like I haven't tried. Might be getting 63 Fairlane. Very cool. 500. I'm excited for a project. So what are you going to put in it? A Ford? <laughs> so the poll should be, should Kevin put a Ford or a LS in his Fairlane? Best place to look for power is inside the boost controller. That really is easy. That makes life easy. That's clever, Admiral. Think about a bigger stall converter, re-gearing the rear end, a torque cam, but the stall converter is lower on the list. So I was wondering if long tube headers make low speed torque. They do. The stall converter on a 4.8 is probably going to make a big difference. Especially if you have a cam in it. Rob, this is your first live stream? <laughs> your wife, wife's going to be pissed. She hasn't even met me. She doesn't even know me. She shouldn't hate me yet. Yeah, Charles, I agree. <laughs> Once you go K, there's no way. All I'm saying is we normalize for chassis and chassis weight. K24 is slower than a 2J. It's a smaller motor. It's a lot smaller. One coil on my 94 Stealth isn't firing. ECU issue. It could be a coil driver or it could be the coil itself. Yep, questionable parentage. <laughs> I push stock mini wasted spark coils past 900 horsepower and they work the whole way. Only place to look is more boost. It, uh, it, does, <laughs> it does seem to solve a lot of problems. Especially in the going from 10 to 15 range is really good or 15 to 20. Um, as you start going up high, it can be problematic. Porting the heads is the best bet for free horsepower. Yeah, if you can port yourself, that's good. But on a... On a 2.2, the, the turbo really is going to kind of be the determining factor. Guessing nobody has shown the eight cumulative horsepower they made from that stuff that didn't work, that didn't work for you individually. No, they have not shown that. <laughs> that would be nice. And, and I've... 
I've been pretty diligent about looking for that stuff too, because I want it to work. I want to show power. And I especially wanted it to show power when I was doing all the testing for engine masters, which was lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of testing, a lot, lots of stuff that never even worked or worked to where it worked at the bottom and not the top or the top and not the bottom. And so it rocked the curve and the average number was the same. We made a lot of changes that made a lot of shifts, but we were only looking for average power production. So it was average horsepower and average torque over the given range. And that's all that we cared about. We didn't care that, it, hey, it made this thing makes, you know, instead of making 650, it makes 700 horsepower. Well, that's, that's great, except our average numbers is worse. So we did a lot of that. And I tested a lot of weird things, different stacks and in, in, um, gaskets and all kinds of weird stuff, you know, different rocker ratios and different cylinders and different, you know, some on the intake, some, some on the exhaust, all kinds of things. One thing I didn't try that I should have tried is I didn't try, um, I think we had solid cams in those, but we did try lash loops on that. Um, I think I tried, I did not. I think we could have tried different push rods, but I didn't try different push rods. Have you ever tested for power differences in catch can versus recirculated crankcase gases or gases pulled from a suction pump? Well, gases pulled from a suction pump, if you can create vacuum in the crankcase, you can definitely get power from that. So using an external pump, whether if it's electric, that'd be even better. That way you're not driving a pump with the motor. But even a, even a crank-driven uh, scavenging pump or a uh, vacuum pump will, will improve power rather than just having it breathe into atmosphere. So with cheapy Amazon forward-facing turbo headers, I had to make long wires that reach all the way under the back of the engine. We had to do that originally when I first started running turbo stuff on the engine 902. She ran all the way to the back of the engine, then forward to the plug. It doesn't seem to make any difference. It didn't make any difference in power for us either. I wouldn't even worry about eight, eight horsepower out of 600. I would worry about eight horsepower out of 600, but people keep talking about that number, but it's zero or horsepower out of 600. And that's the real number. So if it was actually, if, that, if there was one for each one of those and there was consistently one, like if you did an ABA test and it was always one, if the movement was always one, I'd go, that's one horsepower. That's a real thing. I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. And if I could find that in a bunch of different places, that would be awesome. But when you find nothing and then they artificially attribute something to it, and then go, yeah, if I looked in all these places, it's that. I'm like, yeah, but you just added one horsepower that wasn't there and then multiplied that invisible one that was a zero. And you've now multiplied that out and it being eight now. It's still zero and zero times eight is still zero. So you had nothing and you just artificially added something and are now making up a story to justify you adding the one horsepower. Yeah, I want to strangle those guys. These mainly severe duty stainless valves in my LS416 desert race engine. Okay, I'm stepping up my valve lift to 650. Is the Ferret Hall stem valve reliable for this application? That, that'd be a better question for those guys. The Hall stem valve is definitely going to be lighter, and you're um, going to definitely be able to run more RPM with that, given your spring rate. What about proper proper fuel atomization and adding power? I think that there's potential there if if you had bad atomization and then you had good atomization. I'd want to know how you had started out with bad atomization and then how you changed it to good atomization. What created that? There's a lot of things that guys say did that, like, oh, injectors, injector spray pattern or fuel pressure, all, all, all these things that are like, oh, yeah, I got better atomization. First of all, did it show any power when you did that change? And then I'd want to see that. What is the droplet size? What did, what did you change? What, how are you getting, you know, I want to see all that. Did we, ever, did we ever hear anything about the V16 LS? I thought that there was a 12 cylinder one, right? Or was there a V16? 
idea for engine masters. I I'm not part of that program. So you'd have to recommend that to Dave and those guys. V belt versus a serpentine. I want to see the new K24 swap tech for direct injection heads and adding port injection also. Yeah, we're not going to get into direct injection K24 stuff, I don't think. Uh. Full electric engine accessories for at least the parasitic loss. Yeah, just get rid of all of them. Have the updated Holly HP Dominator to deal with direct injection as primary or secondary? I don't know if they can run direct injection. Do they have drivers that will work for that? Full electric accessory gain, power gains are offset by the demand on the alternator. I don't think that that's true. I don't think that that's a direct trade-off. So aside from a turbo and a cell converter, what's good low-speed torque for the 4.8 liter? Um, displacement, compression, more runner length. Um, long tube headers. All that works. Serpentine with all accessories versus alternator and all electric driven accessories. So I have accessory video up already. It's not that though. You're setting a cam and get the right intake center line. It wants five degrees advanced, but your timing set goes by twos. Would you go to six or four? I don't think you're going to see a difference there. Would it be worth upgrading the coil if you're getting spark blowout with the plug set at 20 thousands? 20 thousands, you're getting spark blowout there? Yeah, then I would then I would look at the next stuff that's in line. Is that a single coil on that? On that 2.3? <laughs> You're not good with coming up stuff right on the spot. Come on. That's what life is all about. What's the best head option for 4.8? The one that's on there, a ported version of the one that's on there, or the TrickFlow 2 of 5 is really good. Should Richard get back to Magnum testing? Yes, obviously I should. Richard, have you ever tried to do a test on a set of heads with the exhaust port extremely ported on turbo so you want it chad do you just want the exhaust port done on heads and not the intake a v6 magnum can rusty o2 sensors make power yes obviously because if you can't pull the o2 sensor out it's obviously got to be good right magnesium engine parts they're good to throw in bonfires Proper flow and atomization. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see gains from atomization. I want to see that happen. Big boost on a small displacement or a small boost on a large displacement? Well, it's big boost on everything, right? For a 434 internally balanced engine, doesn't matter what flywheel you want. You just need to run a, um, if it's a internally balanced, you just need to run a neutral flywheel. K24 
Did you reuse MLS head gaskets? Yes. Overbill, what's up? <laughs> you watch the show, you can hear Tom Cat screaming at each other in the barn. Nice. Let's see. So you're about the K24 V8. Yeah, I talked to that guy. That's kind of cool. Got a deal on a K24 V7 from a 17 Acura ILX, 201 horsepower direct injection. Cool. Catch cans versus stock versus vacuum pump. The reason that I don't like drawing oil vapor into the stock manifold is is because I just think it's a dumb idea. <laughs> I don't like having all, all the oil vapor in there. I don't like ingesting the oil vapor and having it run in the motor, especially in a performance one, because it's easier to get detonation with oil vapor. So I don't like that. A vacuum pump's a good idea. We know that that will make power. Um, and a catch can, venting it to atmosphere is what we do normally. I don't normally run a vacuum pump on it. Sky, their stock L28 injectors have bad atomization. Why? Are they, do they have a bad spray pattern? Do they have a bad pintle design? What's going on? Will Cam and heads on a Smog 350 with a stock 76cc heads make a worthwhile power game with a stock bottom end? Yes. Take a look at the L82 upgrade that I did, and you'll I, I have a video up on that. Test turbo mufflers on NA applications. We run lots of I run lots of muffler tests on NA stuff. You ever done a 427 LS versus a uh, LS7 versus an LS3? Uh, no, I haven't done that. That would be difficult to do and make everything be the same. Did I miss a bunch of stuff here? I'm scrolling down. I, I think I missed stuff here. I think I did. I'm scrolling back. Uh, Logic Lover, thank you very much. I did miss that. Oh, and I wanted to, I forgot to bring it up too. I wanted to show you what, um, for you people that have little ladies, uh, wives or girlfriends, I was going to show you what drink that you should give to them. Let's see. None of the other channels on YouTube have shown us what a Magnum does under boost before it goes bang. Oh, so you want to go all the way. You don't want to just see what it does under boost. Turbo mufflers are for NA. Does anyone live around Illinois that can recommend a tuner for a stock ECU? Pre-turbo mufflers? You want to put mufflers in front of the turbos? That doesn't sound like a good idea. Turbo exhaust test. You should test a Richard built crowd voted custom mufflers. I have to build my own mufflers. I don't know that I'm qualified to do that. I don't know if I'm qualified to weld that stuff up. I do want to learn to TIG weld though. So wait on the L67, big bang. What if, what if it's an L32 instead and not a 67? 
Sprint motor definitely is a given, obviously. It's the most powerful thing I've ever produced. Stock versus aftermarket fuel pressure regulators. I don't think we're going to see anything different there. Is a 4.3 Vortec worth it for modifying? The, the problem I have with 4.3 Vortex is that there's not a lot of, of a cylinder head support for them. And the, and the stock heads are not very good. They're not up to what that motor could do if it had good heads on it. So if you had like an LS style head for that thing, that would be really good. It's just not there in a 4.8 would be easy to modify. Ever seen intake valves too big for the bore and then machine the cylinder? Uh, no, we're going to do that on the 4.8 or a 5.3 and put the LS3 heads on it. But I have a motor in my garage that already has that from the factory. The, the 396 big block, because it uses the, this is an L78, 375 horse 396. But because it shares the cylinder head with the 427 and 454, the bigger bores, the valve overhangs the cylinder bore. So they did the factory notch the top of the bore for that. Cam before turbo on a budget five, three else build. Most people do the cam first, but you could do it either way because a, even a turbo stock cam five, three is still a good motor. But the thing is, if you're going to do ring gap, if you're taking the thing that far apart to do ring gap, you might as well put a cam in it. Favorite for XGM, Amerabera, or the LV3? Just wondering. I've never run uh, an LV3 here. I've, the guys at Brian Tui have. I have run the Amerabera, which I'm going to run more of. And I like that motor. I think it's pretty cool. When testing mufflers, test a stock 90s power stroke muffler. Oh, they sound good. <laughs> heads cam and intake 7.3 versus the heads cam and intake. L8T. Call John Kazi for advice on your Ford. I'm sure that's to somebody up there, right? <laughs> it's Valentine's Day and you're spending with me. I know, but that's, you know, that's really sweet. It's like it would kill you to give me flowers once in a while. Put a six liter uh, stroker muffler on my old 94 v6 thank you again logic lover you think the cylinder wall would shroud the valve it does but but they, they had to first solve the problem of the valve hitting the piston or the valve hitting the the board the top of the bore so they did solve that and i i think ultimately it probably limits flow and limits power with that head on that bore size but the motor is so much smaller that it's the amount of flow that the head has is way more than enough to support what that 396 puts out. Have you ever experienced boost loss through a bad spark plug? Steve Morrison had an episode show a spark, a spark plug tester testing for the situations. So you mean I've had spark plugs not fire and that definitely creates a problem with producing boost. It doesn't like that at all. The problem with the turbo motor, if you have a bad cylinder, it's it's awful. It's it's less awful on a supercharged combination, but on a turbo, it's definitely awful. And so if you have a fouled plug or a cracked plug, um, but you'll be able to hear the thing misfire. At least we have been able to so far. Is it worth installing electric fans on my truck? I don't know. I The manual fan seems to work really well under a lot of different environments. And so I'd be leery of that. How come I'm not doing sick week? I don't have any drag race cars. Uh, although I would like to bring the, um, Jimmy and I have been talking about running the, the turbo J swapped um, NSX maybe for some of those events for next year. Godzilla Fairlane would be good. Have you ever looked at a MagnaFlow laminar flow muffler with a perforated cone? I don't know which one that is. 
Um, I've run a lot of Magnaflow muffers. In fact, I ran a series of them when I was doing Engine Masters. I don't know if that's a brand new thing because that was a lot of years ago that I did that. And we we run Magnaflow stuff on the engine dyno, and uh, I like their stuff. It sounds good and it seems to work really well. Pouring ahead with four barrel intake for a turbo 2.3. I think I do a lot. Ports are small. You're doing a four barrel intake manifold on there. And you're, are you going to blow through that? You should test muffled X pipes when you test the turbo mufflers. So you want to run an X pipe after the turbos? An X pipe placement so you want to move the distance of the x pipe or something the x pipe by the way on an na motor made very little difference in power it does make a difference in sound but an x pipe and an h pipe and not having a pipe made very little change in the power output of the motor that they tested on when the engine masters did i look up their data are there any good uh, domestic inline fives the the atlas has a inline five cylinder Richard, we were talking earlier about the old drains being pressurized by the crank spinning. Can you explain? Yeah, the, the crank has a spinning direction. So what it wants to do is grab oil. And because of all of that stuff spinning in one direction, it has a maelstrom of stuff. It basically creates what you would think is a sideways tornado. And then what it wants to do is push all of that stuff up. And if you have a drain coming down in the direction that that's going in, it makes the drain hard. It makes it harder for stuff to drain. That's why people tend to put a drain in the direction of the spin. So it actually would theoretically draw that out. But it, what it does is not impede the flow out of it. The, and, and having it in the front cover solves that problem also for LS stuff. Any difference power-wise, chamfered and non-chamfered mufflers? We have to look specifically at what mufflers you're talking about, not, not as a general thing. Using the supercharger inlet vacuum as a vacuum pump. So you, you want to draw the oil vapor into the supercharger? Again, I, that's not a good idea. 2.5 versus 3 versus 4 versus 5 out of the turbo full length. Uh, I already ran the, the exhaust test on the, we ran a three. Yeah, we ran a three, a three and a half and a four inch out of the turbo. And the bigger that you get up to a point, a five is probably not going to do anything at the power level that we were at, but a four definitely did. And three, you definitely hurt power. Pretty garage, I understand dyno tune is most effective for gains and reliability, but I just want a basic gains on my 03 LQ4 Silverado plug in tuner suggestion. Just any has anybody used any of these, you know, pre-canned tunes that they have for I don't know, SCT or HP tuners or any of those that, that he can load in and have gains? I've never tested those on the chassis dyno. Cooney Garage, you use Diablo tuner for my 05 Chrysler. They might have one that works for the for the Chevy. Richard, have you ever tested lubrication and friction losses with the different additives or lubricants? We've tried some stuff at West Tech and not really had much success, but I do have one from a guy that I met at from Hot Shots <laughs> Secret. So some sort of secret sauce that the, and he has oil too, that um, I'm supposed to test and I want to see if it does anything. He has oil and he has some sort of additive to conventional oil that's supposed to change and make power. So I'd, I'd like to test it and see if that, if it really does that. Richard, what's that turbo would work on my 186 cubic inch Iron Duke? Uh, depends on the power level that you want, Razor. Just let me know what kind of power you want. And um, probably a 3076 or, I mean, you're trying to make like 500 or something or, or 3582, one of those. 
Have you ever tried buying Chinese heads and porting them to see if they make the same amount of power compared to aftermarket heads? I don't know which engine family you're talking about and which specific heads you're talking about, but Chinese heads are not a definition of a head. So you have to talk about which ones, like, is it a skip white head? Is it a pro max head? Is it because all of those are different. So you have to talk about that. And I wouldn't be the one to port them to make them better than anything. Cause I'm not a qualified head porter. Um, you'd want somebody that's professional to be able to do that. What's the right kind of camshaft to run for a turbo application? The kind of camshaft that gives you the results that you want. That has nothing to do with you having a turbo. So you need to look at the camshaft to do the other things that a camshaft has to do. Then you just need to add boost to it because it will work with whatever you decide with your camshaft. So do you want the thing to idle? Like, a, do, you, like do you want a stock cam, first of all? Does that work? And then you add a turbo to the stock cam because chances are if you have an NA motor and you're adding a turbo to it, that stock cam was not designed as a turbo cam, and yet it still works. Do you want, what kind of idle quality do you want? Do you want chop? Do you want a rough idle? Do you want good drivability? Do you want fuel mileage? Do you not care about that? Do you just want all of the top end power? Do you want good average power production? Do you want good average torque production? Do you want a stock converter? All of those questions you have to answer, and then a camshaft, and, and actually there'll be hundreds and hundreds of camshafts that will satisfy your requirement. And so just pick one of those and then add boost to it and you'll be happy. Where do you look for power gains once you've done everything to do with the engine, electric water pump, remote air conditioning, uranium injection. Even the angle or injector distance will affect atomization. Uh, Charles, or some randomness are usually better with a mild cam for street driving units, something like a sloppy stage one or two if you're feeling spicy. Test the turbo mufflers on an NA application. We run those. The, the ones that I run usually on the LS are a turbo style muffler, but it's a straight through. So I don't know if that's technically a turbo. It's, it's the turbo muffler oval shape. <laughs> and I think that that muffler uh, shape is by design. So for packaging so that it fits. So I don't know what the exact definition of a turbo muffler is. I know that it was the ones that they use on a turbo Corvair, I think originally. Who's the best guy to talk to at Holly? I have no idea for that. Well, 6.0 board to 6.2 or the 6.2 piston make good power and what kind of head? Uh, I wouldn't do that. You can if you want. I wouldn't recommend that. I don't think you need to do that. Um, but the head that you could put on the 6.0 and a 6.2 is the same. You can either put uh, any sort of stock cathedral, any sort of stock rec port, any sort of ported cathedral, any sort of ported rec port. There's lots of stuff to choose from. At what boost level or cylinder pressure do you start to create head sealing problems with the stock LS? Are you talking about with a stock cylinder head? Single coil, single plug per cylinder, breaks up as soon as it hits 25 pounds. Then are you, are you using a stock coil or is it a um, like a blaster coil or what, what kind of coil is it? You need a coil probably with more windings or multiple coils. What would affect the oil return going into the mechanical fuel pump plate on a small block Chevy? I think we've tried that. I don't remember where the drain hole was on the on the um, oil return.
I saw your video on a 5.3 that was board and stroke to 3.83 and supercharged, but isn't a shorter stroke usually better for boost applications? No. The boost just multiplies what's there. So whatever is there, if you have more of it and you multiply it, you're going to end up with more. Can you hurt a street V8 by running it lean and cruise? No, you won't hurt it. My dad's convinced that small watch should never get to 15 to 1. Keep telling him to lean it out for better fuel economy. If you're cruising down the road at light throttle and no load, then 15 to 1 is fine. In fact, we in the Civic, we were running 18 or well, 19 to 1 in lean burn. Then the motor set up for lean burn. And that by that, I don't mean strength or not hurting itself. I mean, it has, it induces swirl and it has a really, really tiny primary cam. Um, and so it's set up for that, but you should do it. You should lean it out until you get misfire. And you'll get better fuel mileage. Let's see. Let's see here. Turbo cams, turbo mufflers, all those are definitely. If you want fast spool up on your turbo, um, don't limit the exhaust size after the turbo. <laughs> the, the bigger the exhaust that you have after the turbo, the quicker it will spool. This sort of like back pressure nonsense is, is not good. Thrush turbo mufflers. Yeah, you got to get the thrush hushes, man. That's what my brother had on his Firebird. Richard, would you have any interest in a 78 Buick Turbo 3.8? Buddy just pulled it to do an LS swap. So is it a is is a 78 is the um, hot air ones? Let's see. 1978 to 83. So that's the first year. So that might that might even be like a carbureted one, right? So I'm reading about it right now. Introduced to the public in the fall of uh, night in 77, Rochester four barrel turbo 3.8 liter pumped out 165 horsepower and 285 foot pounds at 2,800 RPM. And they also had a two barrel version of it. So what is his? Is this a two barrel or four barrel version? Both ran nine pounds and eight to one compression. Pretty high boost for a stock one. Contemporary v V8s were doing about the same power and torque numbers. So in context, the V6 looked the V6 looked like a good deal. Special crank, more conservative cam. See, why do they do that? Put the NA cam in it. Cast aluminum pistons were special to the turbos, as was the Air Research T3 housing for 79 and new head design bump power to 170. Ooh, for 165. The torque dropped. But, but other models got um, higher torque and power ratings because of the exhaust system. See, we were just talking about that. Big exhaust for turbo stuff, the way to go. Anti-knock, electronic spark control. <laughs> Two little lights, one for 3.5, another one for 6 PSI. Um, that would be cool to run one of those. Yeah, send me an email and let me know what's going on. I would I would like to run one of those. Definitely, we'd, we'd want to do an intercooler on it, make it a Grand National motor. Put a can in my truck. No, thank you. Have you tested injector spraying upstream? Do you mean closer to the opening of the of the intake port? Or, or spraying in the other direction. How forgiving is a bottom end in a 5.7 Hemi? Uh, the piston crown is not really thick. 
If you put ring gap in them, you can do a lot with them. You started the rumor that iron heads make more power when using nitrous. Well, the the iron heads making more than aluminum heads is a is something that's been going been propagated for years and years and years for decades, really, because you know the aluminum dissipates heat, and so the iron doesn't. So if you keep the heat, you make more power. I don't, I don't know what I agree with that. Anyone VH swap a Corvair? I've seen a couple of those. Two more minutes. I'm trying to catch up here. I was spraying it in the other direction. I don't think I've done that. I know that the the old Formula One guys used to do that. Um, I'm more interested in moving it farther away from the valve and that we know that that helps. What sites are you referencing for the Buick engine? All I did was do a search. I did a Google search for 1978 Buick 3.8 liter. And this one is on Hemmings, Hemmings.com. It says 1978 to 83 Buick 3.8 liter turbo. So if you go to Hemmings, it has a bunch of information there. And have actual experience with turbo stuff. That's good. So we're going to close out our poll at 77% saying yes, that I should. At this 23% of thinking that I shouldn't do test turbo mufflers. Come on, guys. Dirty Harry said nobody puts ketchup on a hot dog. I disagree with that. I put ketchup and mustard on mine. And I do that on my hamburgers too. So Dirty Harry doesn't tell me what to do. Uh, Marty, do you have my email? Yeah, let me know. If it's a four-barrel setup, that's cool. The two-barrel made a little bit less power, but either way, we don't we don't really care. Jim Bell is going to be thrilled if I run one of those. Million your cylinder heads will add power. Yes, that can. It, it raises the static compression. Let's see how cats affect turbos pre and post versus no cats. If you, if you put restrictions before or after the turbo, it will definitely affect power. What angle did you use on the injectors? We used um, straight in. If you look at the videos up, I put them in front of the air horns on an individual runner setup on the, uh, it was a TWM setup for a Honda B series. And so I put the injectors directly on top. I made a special sliding um, fuel rail setup so I can move the distance of the injectors away from the air horns. So you can you can look at the video. It's up and it shows you what, what I did. And it did make a lot of power moving them from their normal position. And actually, it wasn't even their normal position because they already had two positions on that uh, IR setup and theirs were farther up. Not quite maybe mid-length up the port and we moved them all the way to the outside. Uh, no, no on big, no on mayonnaise though. Oh, overbuilt. You're doing an RC buggy. Nice. The GTO started all 70 LS6 Chevelle was the king. That's the car that I want next. Uh, I don't necessarily want a 70 numbers matching LS6 because I don't have numbers matching LS6 um, kind of money. <laughs> but um, we were watching John Wick. My son and I were watching John Wick, the first one. And um, after they steal his, they said it was a Boss 429. It didn't look like a Boss 429. But they stole his Mustang. And then so the guy gave him... Um, a 
uh, 70s Chevelle and uh, an SS. And so I told my son, I said, that's going to be my next car. I'm definitely going to have one of those. It almost should have a big block in it, right? <laughs> Richard, do you think the LT1 would benefit from an LS1 style injection system? I do. I think it would be more, ultimately be more reliable. Um, although they seem to have cured the optic spark problem when they put the drains in them, and so they could get make sure that the water wasn't in there, and they could get all the moisture out of them. But if you have, it's a, if it, is it a 600 horsepower NA motor? And on that note, good night, Marty. Thank you. Now, let me know about that one. That's an interesting deal. 61 and Paula 409. I do like that. Dumb question. Do you add gap to all three rings? No, just the first and second ring, not on the oil, not on the oil rings. How much can you mill your head uh, with a stock bottom in 5.3 with a 600 lift cam? The 600 lift cam means nothing for piston to valve clearance because when it's at maximum lift, the piston's already down an inch or two inches down there. So you're never going to hit it like that. You're going to hit it from duration. And most guys mill the head. The thing that you need to worry about is not piston to valve clearance unless you have a really big camshaft in it. The thing you need to worry about is having the um, intake manifold fit back on there once you mill the head because as you mill the head, you're it's at an angle. So you're bringing all of those bolt holes inward toward each other. Most guys go 30 thousandths on those. The K series V8 is very cool. What should I do to TBI Chevy without flipping the lid? <laughs> 71 Torino 429 Cobra Jet 4 speed. That would be cool. <laughs> so Dean, you I've just added another another viewer. That's great. I bet it would be blue with white stripes. Mine won't be. I, I want a red one. Uh red and white or red and black. It would be, would be the Chevelle that I would want. And I'm still up in the air about what power plant I would want. I kind of want an LS in it, but like a turbo or blower LS, something, you know, something drivable though. Cause I, what I want it and I, and it has to have AC and I want it so that Lisa and I can use it to go out in, but it's also got to be fast. So you want it to be like, if it has an LS in it, I don't want to just put a five, three in it. I want to put something weird in it. I want to put something in it that's, you know, when you open the hood, it's going to say, wow. So it's going to be like a twin turbo cross ram deal like Matt did with that deal. Something like that. Something weird um, that would be unique or just a big block, <laughs> a cantankerous kind of big block, or maybe a turbo big block or a blower big block, uh, but not something sticking out of the hood. It's got to be all under the hood. I do want the, I want the cowl hood and stuff on it. And, and even want the air grabber. And I'd like the air grabber to be, um, uh, um, or the cow induction to be a functional, even if just, even if the vent just opens and closes, that's all I care about. Yeah. Dean, my, my wife doesn't watch. She's, she has a Mercedes <laughs> and I, and hers, her Mercedes is, is faster than my truck is. Big block with tunnel rams, twin turbos. A big block cross ram with um, uh, like custom Super Richie cross ram with the uh, turbos, that would be good. What's the most PSI a 6 one can run? Uh, I don't know that what the answer to that is. Are you not putting ring gap in it or anything? Uh, if, it's, if you're not putting ring gap in it, it's not going to take very much. Compound boosted 4.8. I already have that up on the channel. As a Chevelle owner, Boss 302, I would take that for 72 Barracuda. That's pretty much it. 7 liter LS 6 in the Chevelle.
And I, <laughs> I'm still up in the air about the transmission too. I have a T56 that I could put in it, which would be cool, but you know, it, it's just be hard to beat a, 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 a 480 or something. Or even a turbo 400 with a with a uh, overdrive in it. Keep my numbers 69 Z28. I like those. I do. I do have a um, a five liter. I have a five liter uh, 88 five liter LX. Like to do another 67 Chevelle. A guy down the street from us has a 67 that's been sitting for years and years. I and mean, as long as I've been there, it's been there. It's been there sitting. Ninety-nine Navigator, five four thirty-two valve. How the heck do you fit turbos in there? It is a tight engine bay. Oh, a, a compound four eight. No, I don't want to do that. That's way too problematic. With the gear vendors in it, yeah, that would be good. 232, 234. That's going to be close. That's going to be on the edge. With 110, that's definitely going to be close. You're going to, you better measure piston to valve clearance. No experience with Cadillac North Stars. Sanchez has one that I can run, but I've never run it. Uh,. T, I'm probably not looking for the kind of Chevelle that you have. Would a V3 supercharger be okay for a stock Hemi? Yeah, you you could easily pick up 100 horsepower or 150 horsepower or whatever. On a 67 Impala, also good, full-size, 427 horse speed, that would be good. Yeah, uh, Ricky, you could fly cut the pistons. You could put valve reliefs in them. And it's probably cheaper just for you to buy pistons for it. Um, they have drop-in pistons that you don't have to rebalance. Those are available. Round tail lights on Chevelle, 70 and 72, and the early. I'd, I'd like a 70, ideally. What YouTube videos should we look forward to you posting? I don't know. And uh, But on that note, it is time to go. I've been here. <laughs> I've already gone late. Uh, I'm, the ones I'm working on right now are... Um, I'm working on a turbo one. I'm working on the Alex Taylor interview, which was a lot of fun. She's, she was awesome. Um, and Chad was there with me. So it's just, you know, it's just a little slice of heaven. It was great. Um, which, which we are, Alex and I are now mortal enemies. So you'll, it will be fun for you guys to watch that one <laughs> when it comes out. Um, and on that note, I will see you guys all tomorrow. Bam, 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 bam,